Good afternoon. Good first day of build? Yeah? Exciting? Got a new terminal. We're shipping uh, Linux kernel and Windows for WSL. Got to see some cool, uh, some cool demos this morning. Um, for those of you who have not, uh, have not had the pleasure to meet, my name is Taylor Brown. Uh, I get the distinct honor and pleasure of kind of leading the Windows container team uh, from the PM side and bringing Windows containers to, uh, to the world. And so today we're gonna talk quite a bit about that as we uh, look at how we take the next step to modernize our Windows Server apps with containers. Um, something I always try to do, slides are available, grab them, take a look at them. If this session isn't the right session for you after you look to the deck, grab some time, go find something else that's gonna be more useful. If it is, awesome, glad you're here. Take the slides, use them, take them back home, show them to your kids, teach them about containers. Um, quick show of hands, how many people here use .NET or ASP.NET? Yeah? We get a little bit of a biased audience at Build, but we still see, even as of uh, you know, 2019, that ASP.NET is, what, 26.3% of all uh, Stack Overflow respondents, uh, .NET, 37.4%. Um, and, you know, of course, with Stack Overflow, we expect to see a little bit more of kind of the, the Node.js and JavaScript kind of crowd coming through there. Um, these are people who are still building new applications on top of, of Windows Server. No big surprise. That adds to the, what, 70% of all enterprise apps that have, uh, have a Windows Server backend. And so, unsurprisingly, we see Windows container adoption just going crazy. Now this little dip that we saw in the middle here was right after we talked about how to actually cache images. So we actually think, we're pretty sure that that, uh, that spike kept going and more people were just caching their images than before. But as of uh, last month, we still see 5.2 million unique downloads of Windows container images every month. And that excludes everything in Azure and most of what's going in Amazon and Google. Right? So huge adoption already for, uh, for Windows containers and just growing. We've got a bunch of customers who are using containers, right? And your logo too can join this great list of, uh, of customers. So let's talk a little bit about how we get started. Um, we'll start off with what host should I use? Well, it has to be a Windows Server host to run Windows Server containers. Many of you are probably using Windows Server 2016, yeah? Well, I would definitely encourage you when you think about a container host to be looking at either Server 2019 or our semi-annual channel. We've done a ton of work since we started on 2016 and this journey with containers and continuing to improve and taking your feedback into account as we evolve this ecosystem. We've done a bunch of optimizations. So how many people have looked at a Windows container image and got, whoa, like 12 gigs? Well, in 2016, it was about 12 gigs on disk. When we get under 2019, it's a one and a half gig download. It looks at about three gigs on disk. So huge improvement, and we got more coming. So in our semi-annual channel now, server 20 uh, version 7, uh, 1903, even more work, including more optimizations on image sizes. And we've got more coming after this. So we're gonna continue this journey of rapid six month iterations on our container stack, trying to deliver real value as quickly as we can to all of our developers and IT admins and app admins out there. So when we think about the server host, Definitely recommend you looking at either Server 2019 if you're a long-term channel, or the new semi-annual channel releases as they come forward. Other big question, what app should I use? Well, we kind of have a spectrum. We think about the easy ones, IIS, web apps, WCF services. These kind of things make a ton of sense in containers, really easy to get started with, no problem. Then we get into kind of the middle layer. These are apps that generally can work. They might need a little bit of tweaking here and there. Things like MSMQ and DTC, stateful applications, things with Active Directory authentication. We absolutely have all the patterns for how to make these work, but you might have to do a little bit of extra work to, to get there. And then there's the dragons. Things with GUIs or drivers, infrastructure roles. Most of these are not supported in containers today or are gonna require you a decent amount of work to get them to work in a meaningful way in a container. Why? Because they've taken dependencies and kind of have an operation model that's really counter to the way that we think about containers. There are roles that are really just kind of better suited for, uh, for VMs and for more of that kind of traditional infrastructure. Doesn't mean they can't be made to work, but 
there's definitely dragons that would have to be slayed. Now a ton of this comes down to figuring out what is the right image to use. So we've got three different options now for base images for Windows containers. Now these are what all Windows container images are born from. On the small side, we have nano server. 100 meg image, super small, really optimized for .NET Core workloads, um, Node or native compiled code, um, but really for kind of our new app workloads. So if you're building a brand new app, nano server is a great place to start. Server core, by far, our most popular uh, image for applications. Why? Because it has most of the compat surface. It can run .NET 3.5, 4.6, 4.7. Uh, it can run most of those Win32 apps that make sense in containers, things that don't have a uh, full uh, GUI or UI surface. And then we've introduced last year our Windows container image. This is a new image that we're building out that has the full Win32 API surface. So we can do things like DirectX, which you'll see later today. And we can do kind of more uh, interesting applications. Now a nice lens to look at these through is what official images do we build off of them? So our .NET Core image, based off of Nano Server. We have a PowerShell image based off of Nano Server, right? Small image. It's the easiest one to get started with. Now as we go into .NET Framework and ASP and IIS, WCF, those images that we build and maintain are built off of Server Core. Now the Windows image, we say open for adoption. Really what we want to see in the next you know, six months a year is what kind of frameworks does the community look for on that? And the community being all of us here, the community being an expansive set of people building on containers. So without further ado, let's get into some examples. And with that, I'm gonna bring up Weijuan and Amber from our team. Now these are two of our PMs who have done a lot of the work to actually bring all of this together. So I'm really excited to have them on stage and take you on this next part of the step. Thank you, Jordan. Okay, so we'll have quite a lot of demos. We'll start with how we do it right with traditional apps. Um, it's still, it'll be the focus of this demo. And actually before we start, I should quickly introduce myself. So my name is Joan Davis. I'm, dry, I'm the champion for the team on Lift and Shift at Modulation. So I'm very glad to be here. This is my second time, Bill. Um, and Amber? Yeah, hi, I'm Amber. Um, I've been working with Weijuan a lot on how to improve these experiences you have with Windows containers. See it here. Now, a simple two-tier web app usually start with a user, you know, through a browser, and then you have SV.NET, IS in the middle, and you also have SQL at the back end. Um, and the, usually, you know, we when you think about containerization, uh, we recommend people to start small, meaning you know you can uh, just start with the middle and make a container. And for SQL-wise, uh, you know, some people have tried use container. In fact, you know, SQL has um, express version containerized on Windows, and also later on we'll show a private preview sign up for uh, SQL, uh, you know, full professional as well. But so, you know, uh, um, most of the time people are okay with the running VM. So this is what the setup we're gonna have. We'll show you how to contain on the IS container, uh, IS uh, in, as a web service, and how you run it, uh, lift and shift, running in the, uh, in the containerized workload. So here it is. Um, now, to do that, I'm gonna put my actual words into action. I'll show you here, some of you might, be, uh, might recognize this uh, very old iBuy Spy app. It's released as probably 10 years ago, even longer, uh, as a um, starter kit. Um, and it was originally written as a web form and based on .NET 2.0. So in our next few steps, we're gonna show you how you make this uh, to a container and run it on your local desktop, and we'll also show you how you put it into Azure in action. Okay, let's switch to my demo machine here. So I have the source code open here. Um, so uh, this is the application, this I, I spy. Uh, I'm gonna skip the details of the application itself, but we, the, the tricky part, the sort of starting point is, to containerize is actually all, everything is a Docker file. Um, as a, you know, to set up sort of the background for people who are new here, uh, you know, Docker file is sort of like mani manif manifest, you know, a guide, a map, how you put an application to a container. So in this case, this one's a little bit complicated. 
But you can easily, if you are just starting, you can easily use Visual Studio, start a web app, and they have offered, you know, you can add a Docker container support, they'll generate a Docker file for you, and you immediately run it on your local machine. So it's pretty cool, you see it. In this case, this is slightly uh, um, more advanced, because uh, we want to show what's real, what's happening. So in this case, as you can see, here at the very top, uh, as Taylor mentioned, you know, we have different container uh, based, Windows based OS images, and the first step always, you know, you find the choose the right base image. And in this case, I should mention, uh, this Docker file is called multi-stage build, meaning the first stage you actually get us all the source code uh, and you put it in and then build a container. The benefit is you don't have, you know, because uh, the runtime and the source code, and you don't want to have them in, out of sync. So this may take a little bit long time to build, but give you latest and up, uh, latest and greatest uh, for your source code and runtime. So back to the stock, when you can see we uh, we get the um, um, the SDK of uh, .NET, uh, and based on the late, uh, the release of Server 2019, and next you know you copy different the source code uh, and you build it, and that's the first stage. And second stage, runtime stage, you can similar base image, and later on, you know, some of its configuration, because uh, for I as a container, some of you are probably familiar, and at the end, we'll also an entry point to monitor service. So this is sort of map how you build a container. Now, to actually run it, um, uh, you might have noticed we have a little uh, well icon here. It's a Docker for desktop. Um, so there's a lot of configuration uh, here. You can you know, click on and, and see what happens there. I'm going to take you to a a PowerShell window to show uh, how to do that. So, in fact, now on my machine, I already staged a few, um, a few images to give you a sense of what I have here. So first thing, I run the Docker image, and then, and I might already, you know, uh, have it. And also, I want to see, you know, what I probably already have it running. So let's check what's happening here. In fact, I have one container running here. No, oh, the screen's too big. But I, I can show you how to do build. So here, Docker build. I might have the command here. Remember here, we talk about the Docker file. It's under this folder, under the, um, the comments folder. So you want to specify how you run this. So in this case, it will be comments if I, yes, Docker file. Uh, and I want to give a name. Uh, will be I spy, I buy spy, not I spy. Let's say I want to give you two. So I'm not going to uh, build it because it takes time. Well, actually, run. I can run it here. Right? Double check. This is the syntax. So that's, that will take, you will see it actually uh, in the steps. You'll get the local image. Uh, and then they will build. Oops. Path not play. Uh, let's just build new. We have the Docker file, right? I think it might be. Uh, no, I, I, I forgot the last dot. <laughs> the, oh, okay, let me check my cheat sheet. Uh, what did I miss here? Oh, I missed the target number, missed the keyword here. So this is uh, actually running, this is the, um, the prompt, the dash T. There's a target of how you build it. Okay, so easy to make a mistake here. Now, it takes some time to build, as, you, uh, as I mentioned earlier, because of two stage. Uh, so we'll leave it there, but I already have one running. Um, I have um, actually, in fact, I show here, so I wish the screen will be smaller. So I'm going to go switch to another screen to, to show you the, the one, one. If I want to run it, it just run, and I want to run it detect. Oh, in fact, this is coming to show this uh, stage coming here. Coming back here, and I know what to run, and I run detached, and I have I spy, I buy spy. Um, I should call out, because container is actually virtualization, right? We didn't give the sort of one on one virtualization, so everything's virtual, like your storage and network. Uh, and for us, um, you know, it, it's a web service. So there's, uh, in, when you run, you want to map what's in your container to your host so you can access to it. So here I need to uh, map, uh, I can map 8, 8, 
let's say a five to the host and I will be running here. And this is what I have. So this is probably give me warming because I already have a run, but I wanted to show you this is how the command you run it. Okay, now, so that, why don't we try it? It'll tell me I'm already have one running. Or it's running another one, another instance. Okay, now while it's doing that, we can go see it on, in, on my machine. Remember I give the A0, I had this one that pre-staged, I have a, a port. And remember I gave it a new port, let's see if it works here. It's a bit risky because of the network here, but let's see. And this takes some uh, initialization time, and this, the Docker PS command gives you a sense what's happening. So you see probably starting, and it takes, takes time to load. Oh, and you can see that you are actually loading back, so it takes time. It'll get there. I know it's doing the rendering. It'll get there. So it's a, it's a slow, it's an old application, so it takes time that in terms of uh, actually up and running. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm, doesn't like what I have. It might be. Let's see. Let's. Sorry about that. We do have. I want to make make the screen bigger. This is a live demo here. I didn't start here. We let's see the status here. So I have, I spy, which I have it on thirty seconds, and it's it is still starting. Okay, while it's starting, I'm gonna go back to the, what I have staged in the interest of time. So this is what uh, I have run, and the, the map, you map from your host, the, the container mapped your host with this port, so now you're actually running on the container. For the user, it may same experience, right? So this is the first step, how you actually make a very old application uh, based on .NET 2.0, and rebuild uh, and put in a container based on Windows Server 2019 and you can run it in your local environment uh, with help from Visual Studio and Docker for Windows. Now, uh, the, uh, so you, if you want to see a, a common issues, you know, as a developer, you want to troubleshoot, right? Like, what I, you know, how do I know if it's actually running well? Uh, or, you know, I just want to know what's going on with container. Like, containers, I think at the beginning, Taylor mentioned there's no UI, so it's not very easy to get what's metrics going on. Um, so it has been a problem we have had a lot of trouble with, or a challenge with, and we recently have spending time, and Taylor, um, Amber would tell us the effort behind that and give us a demo. Next. Cool, um, so I'm gonna jump to a little slides. Um, yeah, so one of the main challenges that people have mentioned to us about Windows containers is that how do we even get relevant metrics, so like logs, other information outside of the container so that you know, we can process it, see what's going on with the app inside, not just how healthy is the container, um, but also how healthy is the app inside of it. Uh, and this has been a problem especially with Windows because if you look to this diagram here, there's a bit of a difference between the way Linux containers and Windows containers work. Um, they're each running different types of operating systems, so obviously the way the apps work inside of them is a little bit different as well. So if you can see, in a Linux application, we'll have all of its app logs go to standard out, whereas a Windows container is running a Windows operating system, and it also provides a lot of information, but this information is locked in different environments such as ETWs, perf counters, custom app logs, event logs, and so on. So Windows actually produces a lot of information, um, but a lot of our customers have mentioned that there's kind of the struggle of getting it actually out. Uh, so what we did as the work to kind of kick off some efforts in this area is we want to introduce this new log tool POC that I'm going to demonstrate to you soon um, that kind of connects these metrics that the Windows containers produce and the standard out path, which actually is what is picked up by Docker logs and a lot of other tools that the container ecosystem relies on. Um, so without too much further ado, we're gonna jump into a container log tooling demo. So um, I'm going here back to the source code to kind of show you what exactly this tool is. 
So Weijin mentioned that this is a source code for iBuySpy. Um, and what we did was we modified the source code a little bit to add, first of all, this area, this metric hub, which is the actual entry point that we created. Um, and for an entry point, you know, previously Weijin showed that there is the IIS service monitor, which was kind of just monitoring the service. We kind of expanded the functionality of this idea of an entry point to also collect information from ETW perf counters and custom app logs. So to show you kind of where the modifications are, um, we have one area here where, if I can go down here, where we added just this entry point, um, metric hub entry point, you know, exe. Uh, metric hub is just what we decided to call this POC internally. It's by no means what we're gonna have finally, but um, just to give you a sense. So here, because I already pre-did this, because don't wanna bore you with Visual Studio editing, um, we're gonna hereby, without you know, commenting it out, enable this. And so this is the modification that I'm doing to the source code. Um, I'm gonna switch over to here, where uh, Weijin showed you the Docker build command that we had for this Docker file. I'm gonna run the exact same thing here. Um, obviously, it does take a while, and I also did pre-stage a couple of images. So while this is building on the side, I'm gonna switch over here and kind of show you what we have so far. Um, so I pre-stayed an image called I by Spy Monitor just to show the distinction between the old one and the new one. Um, and to run this image, we do the same command that uh, Wadron showed you previously. So it's detached and I'm just exposing, you know, whatever port I choose. And because within the source code, we expose, we expose the container port of 80, we're just kind of mapping the two together. Um, and then I just point to whatever image that I would want to uh, run. And I'm gonna call that one local. I'm not actually gonna press this <laughs> because we already have an application running here. Um, so I'm just gonna show you what we have running so far. So this is the command for Docker PSA to show you all the running containers so far. Um, so as you can see, I have two. To call you the distinction, the first one is iBuySpy local, which just means it's without any of the monitoring tools. The second one is iBuySpy monitor, where we added that entry point that I just described. Um, so let's go over here into my website, and I'm gonna first go to our local version. Um, this is without any monitoring tools. So if we do Docker logs here, and we take this, you're gonna quickly see that no information comes out. <laughs> um, give it a little bit of a second. Yeah, so we currently, you know, in the old version without any tooling, there is no logs that kind of come out. Um, but if we switch over here, and we go to localhost 8181, which is the po that port that I exposed for the monitoring version, I'm gonna do another command. So F is just mean I'm gonna see all of the stuff as it comes out live. Um, copy that ID here, and you see all this information that's getting outputted. Um, so just to mention, our POC is only collecting ETWs and perf counters and uh, custom application logs at a specified location. Obviously, this is not all the information that we can gather, but that's kind of our starting point. Um, just to kind of show you how live this is, if I clicked around, you see it outputs additional content and information each time the events kind of come through. So that is kind of the work that we kicked off for uh, part of our tooling efforts. Right, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna switch back to my screen. Um, in fact, now I actually get it work. I think early on the A0, A5, I, I believe it was one side I was building the image that I was going to run. The other side I was trying, uh, building, the other side I was running. So that was not a good practice here. Now actually it's finished running and a map to A0, so you can see that, and it's, it's actually real, we can play. Uh, I, I like the, actually, uh, the bulletproof facial uh, tissue here, so you can actually add to cards. And, and on the same thing on um, Ambers, if she does more uh, actions, you'll see more uh, events. Now we're gonna switch to the slides for a moment to talk about, so we show you more about, like, from your source code, you know, traditional application and your container ties are locally now how you uh, scale um, or you know you want to either use Azure to build or how you deploy to Azure and also even how can I see everything on Azure so this is what I'm going to talk about next uh, I think we will start with uh, Azure Kubernetes 
because this is, you know, we actually recommend customers be looking at, uh, because you have the benefit of all the innovations and benefits of the cloud and Kubernetes all together. You have, you know, much ease uh, operation, agility, and you have enterprise level security and scalability, uh, and you have better access. You can basically run anywhere, uh, everywhere, and anything, uh, especially in this case, uh, you know, we're talking about Windows uh, container as well, not just Linux, right? So I think, as lots of you know, uh, Kubernetes start with Linux uh, world, but we're bringing that to Windows as well. Um, now, specifically, I like the slide that I want to show that is, you know, it's you compare, if you're on AKS, you will be, have a lot of benefit. You compare left and side, left, left and right, uh, with a lot of benefit, you know, you can. You may still need to deliver canonization, but it can will help you do. Like for example, uh, the uh, Docker file like, may have some samples or something. You know, you can uh, apply best practice. You know, something we can help you along the line. Some configuration, right? Where you don't have to do all by yourself. The debugging, etc. And CI/CD. They may. It's still a combination between you and the um, uh, AKS, but the rest, you know, you don't have to worry about the cluster, the provisioning, and the backup, right? So you really get. Uh, you know, both sides, the benefit of both sides, flexibility. Um, okay. Now, we are very excited for us because most of us folks in, uh, was working on Windows team, Windows container side, Windows server container, so really happy to see uh, back in March, Kubernetes community graduated Windows container support from alpha to, to stable. Uh, and right now, AKS Windows container support is in private preview. Uh, so you can see you basically support uh, with the same Linux uh, mass node and the Linux the, the node pool, you know, orchestrate both Linux and Windows workload side by side. And just with the magic, if you are familiar with the uh, community, you know, the same CTL and all the other command with a click of a uh, YAML file configuration file, you can just uh, deploy your Windows uh, workloads to the Kubernetes. Okay, so we're going back to demos again to show you uh, what we saw the slide in action. Back to uh, Amber. Yeah, so this is actually a really exciting demonstration for us to show you how the, the app that we just showed you with the monitoring added can actually show up in AKS and what kind of information you can pull from there. Um, so right now I am in my Azure portal. Um, I'm looking at this Kubernetes service that we kind of pre-deployed a couple of apps to. Uh, and so as you can see here, there's kind of this insight area for Azure monitoring to look at your AKS um, private preview cluster. Um, I'm actually already here, but I'm gonna let this load. And so over here you can see we have a lot of information that you can see about um, your different clusters and the nodes that you have. So to let you guys peer in a little bit more, we're gonna go to the nodes section. Let me collapse this over here. Um, as you can see, there are uh, both Linux and Windows nodes running. AKS requires Linux nodes, um, but you also see these two running side by side. If you go over to this side, you can see that it is running on the Ubuntu OS. Um, but if we click into the Windows node as, node pools as well, you can see that these are running on Windows Server Data Center. So that's super exciting. Now, if we click more into these, um, you can see that we have a couple of apps. Here, let me try to find it. We have um, our iBuySpy monitoring app actually pre-deployed on here. Um, and as you can see, it has different information about the containers that are here. Um, we clearly see that this is running, any image tags, and so on and so forth. So this is also really cool. Um, but it's actually really awesome. If you guys remember that uh, tooling we just added to that application, we have also had it added to the application we deployed to these clusters. And we can click on this new feature of having the live logs show up. So as we wait for this a bit, you can see a lot of the information that we actually could see locally is also showing up via these tooling through Azure Monitoring in AKS. So you can get a lot more information even about the containers that you're running in production um, through this method. And yeah, so uh, just to give you a little bit more insight, this is actually, actually uh, pointing to the nodes that are running on this cluster. Um, so if I click around here, you know, it works, <laughs> which is cool. Um, you can also see these logs additionally follow up and come up live as more, you know, clicks go in. So um, we're going to switch back to the slides. 
So um, we would just want to say that this log tool is the first of many steps that we're trying to take to make your container, Windows container experiences better. Um, so we kind of view the tooling that we're focusing on now as a way to bridge uh, things from old to the new. So if you're running, you know, potentially legacy Windows applications or older applications that are running perfectly fine, but you want to put them in containers, how can we make that experience easier? Um, so logging is only one step, but there are many other bridges that we're hoping to kind of get feedback and learn how to build with you guys. Uh, so some of the areas that we've heard from customers before is understanding dependencies. Um, how do we migrate existing applications? How do we validate that containerized applications are actually behaving the way that we want them to? How do we monitor them? How do we manage them? Are all things and feedback that we've heard from you already. Um, but we love to have additional information and feedback. So we just want to mention that we also have another area where you can look for more information about the efforts that we're putting into this area. Um, so if you go to the blog, this is actually our container on Windows blog, you'll see a new post, even now, um, about the log tooling effort. It has a little bit more detail about how that POC is structured. And we also are looking to get some more feedback. So if you guys have any chance to go to this survey link, um, it asks you a couple of questions about what you're thinking about the POC that we showed today as well as what you would like to see from us in the future. Cool. Yes, it's live, so hopefully we'll see you guys clicking on the survey. We're really eager to hear you. Uh, we have limited resources as always, so we like to let you tell us if we only can do one or two things, what do you like us to focus on? Now, I'm gonna switch to my machine five. So while Amber was talking, I actually uh, spin up the visual uh, VS Code, you can see Conveniently, I have the log on VS Code as well. So you, uh, once you have the container, dog container login, you can see all the um, containers here. I have one, uh, the original one without the log, and I have one. This one, you click on there's no, uh, if you say show log, there's no log, right? That was the old one we don't have. And this one was the old one. Uh, this is a new one, so you, can, you will see a uh, log coming. So it's very easy. Once you have a thing, just automatically happen. So that's one, one, one thing I want to add to that. Oh, this is very busy. The other thing that we talk about, you know, you, you have the local machine, you have Azure, AKS, and also people think about hybrid, like in between, how do you leverage, if you feel run things on your local machine, or run your workloads on, uh, locally on premise, but also you want to leverage Azure computing power. So one thing, you know, uh, there are a few things you can uh, leverage. For example, um, like Azure Container Registry, where we, uh, what I show you, what I can show you here is, you know, if you, this, the, the, the UI, uh, the application is really old, but also we have a new version of, uh, uh, as well. It's configuring the web, in this uh, file, web config. So if I changed show you right to the valid to, uh, to true, to new, um, you know, I, um, that would mean just minor change, right? And you can actually create a new, uh, through the, um, all the automation, the pipeline, you can create a new uh, build, uh, build of the container, and you can deploy, and you can get a UI, you get a new um, application right away. Uh, so I'm actually gonna show you what we have done earlier here. So on my Azure subscription, I already have one uh, created here. Uh, this is the, uh, under here, the, you see we have the old one, we have the new uh, modern one, or we, also, we create a stable one. This is the buy, uh, I buy ACR build is the one I'm leveraging ACR auto build to, uh, to you know, practice if I keep changing how do I automate that. So to give you a quick uh, sense of what's happening, you see we're actually, we're using ACR tasks and we had a few builds this uh, last Friday, or Sunday, Saturday, and we're doing a few one. And the first one we're trying to, uh, Linux platform I found and last one actually working. So you can see, if I click on the log, you see the history. It may take a little bit of time to load, but it gives you, you know, if you are you really DevOps developer, you want to see what's happening, right? You leave the kick off the uh, work, and you can go back to see the log here. And then once it's deployed, and you can, you know, download and deploy it locally or on Azure and plug in your Kubernetes cluster as well. So that's that gives you, you know, as a starting point, a lot of capability you can bridge between your local and uh, Azure, you know, between the dev and the production. Okay. Here, I'm gonna switch, we're gonna switch to the main slides. I think we are, so to summarize, I think we have, anybody to show you how to modernize a two-tier web app, mainly modernize IS as a container, 
uh, from your local machine and all the way deployed to Azure with Kubernetes. You can see the logging. Uh, we have a logging POC that you guys should check out. And also you leverage Azure computing power you know, for some of the hybrid benefit you might uh, in be interested as well. So we're gonna switch to the next, uh, next stage. Thank you, Amber. So I'm gonna talk to you about, so this is, uh, tooling is a sort of big, uh, big part of a uh, lift and shift story. The other big um, elephant in the room is identity. Um, I think a lot of you are familiar with, you know, you, for your typical work enterprise application, you need an Azure directory, and there's identity authentication involved. Uh, container really made it hard, so I'm gonna explain you a little bit what, why it's that way. So remember, earlier I showed you the container two-tier uh, application with identity, you come in user login as domain use, in my case, you know, uh, NTDev from Microsoft, right, Microsoft slash wage one it. And then I go to the web service and I go, and next, the, uh, you know, you have a service account pass on to SQL to, to be authenticated, get whatever information you have, right? So if in the, in outside of the normal world, it should work. Uh, the old world should work. Uh, but because container does by design doesn't have um, identity on its own. Uh, so when the authentic come in, it won't be able to recognize because your container is actually, it's, it's only, it's part of like the OS, you know, it's, it does not have identity uh, provisioned. So, uh, so the thing will go from your middle tier, the IS, and pass on to SQL, it'll be just not anonymous, the, there's no identity on the wire. Uh, that can be a problem, it won't, just won't work. So what we do is we, uh, we leverage group managed service account, which is often short for, um, short as GMSA. Um, some of you might know, uh, it, it's one of the words, I, uh, one, uh, one thing that we have talked to customers a lot. Uh, that, you know, we bridge, uh, we leverage GMSA to help bridge the gap. With GMSA, you provision the container, the host, uh, your Active Directory, um, domain controller, uh, and also, um, you know, the, the SQL by, you know, because it's also on the domain, so they all connected. Basically, now you, as container um, on the wire has identity, and as a user, you will be able to authenticate it in the process, just like in your old world. So in some ways, that's also a bridged tool. Uh, well, here are only seven steps. <laughs> um, uh, so this, um, unfortunately, right now, the, the steps are a little bit or we have long steps here, but this, uh, my team, they did great work on documenting the steps. Uh, you can see the link at detail, uh, at the bottom, uh, the container identity one. Uh, so at a high level, you wanna make sure, you know, you actually talk to domain controller, domain, uh, your, uh, your admin, you know, domain admin to make sure you have the access and be able to create GMSA, et cetera. It's, it may not be always an uh, easy thing, right? Like Microsoft, if I wanna create something, I need to talk to IT, People, I don't know how much they can, right? But maybe you can do in your virtual environment, or maybe on your desktop machine, you can start with uh, with that setup, right? And then you want to prepare the Active Directory, uh, meaning you want to set up th this account. There's uh, like key access, a uh, few things you need to set up as well, and then then you create actual GMSA account uh, for your container host. Uh, you know, same thing. You need to make sure he's the container host head are in the secure group that can access uh, GMSA. Uh, and you also want to create credential spec, which give you detail what kind of permissions or authentication you want to associate to that account. And number six, so you configure app to, to be able to use GMSA. Your application like as, for example, you know, you usually the app pool you want to make uh, as like, uh, give the, um, make it as a now, net, network service with a GMSA account. So you have, have the connection. Or maybe your a console app, it will be slightly different, but you know, it also maps to a uh, network service. So another word um, to look at is you, with the GMS, you don't have to actually pass the password, right, because it's a service account. So on the Y, you avoid that, um, that exposure of security. And lastly, just run the container. When you run the container, early on you guys see us run the container, Docker run, uh, so their parameters allow you to uh, associate, you know, what the credential spec you want to have and also attach the host, the GMS and name. Uh, so this is a very high level step. So I would highly encourage you to read the blog 
uh, we have a blog associated with that, and also the documentation, a lot of details and play with it. It is much clear, much easier, and we'd like to hear your feedback how we, how we do. Uh, for the best experience, uh, recommend to use Windows Server 2019 because it's, um, uh, and also your local machine Windows 10 because in, in the last few release, we have seen a few issues. Uh, for example, I think early on we, when we released uh, one container, uh, multiple containers cannot use the same GMSA and that can be problematic. You know, it's, it's very tedious, right? You have to create multiple. Or those times if you create multiple and the last one always, always override the, the one before that. So we made a lot, we have heard, taken your feedback and made a lot of improvements. We also um, improved the credential spec. There's a PowerShell script in the gallery you can, uh, you can download, so just make your life easier. And we know there's a long way to go. It's part of, uh, related to the tooling, we talk about how do we build a better bridge to connect from old to the new. And this is still at the beginning, uh, so we would definitely like to hear you how you like the tooling, the, the stats, and, and what are the requirements you see that's missing. Oh, can I think I kind of explained the end-to-end -end architecture, but for some people who are visual, and this is how you see you know, this configuration will look like after, before and after. Uh, and um, I'm gonna also run the risk to show you actually a GMSA, you know, container configured GMSA in action. So let me switch to my machine five here. So this is um, this is uh, actually I'll show you application here. Um, let me get the lay. So I have a set of host machine, and as I mentioned, it's it's uh, it's authenticated, right? If you go there, you actually ask me to. Uh, take my uh, name, I have to have a put in password. So this, remember this user and coming in, right? So I'll be, uh, it's in the domains Contoso, and that's me. And to, to simplify, this is, this, this is really uh, not fancy or old applications, very simplified uh, sort of uh, website, SV.net website to show you the concept. So here you can see this is your, we are, um, uh, um, <clears throat> you can have actually, you know, this connected, like we talk about three, uh, the two, uh, two tier, there's a middle and there's a database. So in this case, I can create any, uh, create uh, entry here. I'm gonna show you what it does. And I'm a fan of Game of Thrones, I'm gonna put John Snow here. I forgot how, let's say he's 27. Okay, so, so we have this, this application up and running. Now, this is what users see, but you as a um, developer or I, I, uh, DevOps, what you see in the background. So we're actually gonna go to the machine here. Oh, not this one. Just one. So this is my machine that's actually running the container host. Um, and sometimes I get confused, it's sort of like inception, you know, who am I? And in this case, actually, this is a, I, I'm in the admin on the machine, and this is me. I logged in myself already, remote desktop, so I should show you, this is me. And to be able to run, uh, I'm not admin on the machine, so, um, but to be able to show you what, what happens with Docker is that I need to log in as me, and one of my coworkers did that. So here's, I'm actually as, as him. Now, the, uh, I mentioned to, this is actually running, so I can show you what's happening. This is, is real uh, by doing this here. The, the container running is called um, Docker Demo GMSA Code 1.0, and you can see it's running for a few hours, and the, we mapped the host a container is 80 and no host is 80. That's why you can see the website. I don't have to specify the actual port. So that's why it's running, right? So it seems like I just, it's just working, right? Uh, and to show you it's actually running, I can do, uh, actually go inside. I'll run the, go inside the container. And I'll do a command. 
So now I'm inside a container. Who am I? I'm actually a container administrator. I'm actually going to that container. I, I, um, uh, the containerized version, the uh, um, web server in the middle. So, uh, and you can see I got a lot of things there, right? So it's actually running. So now if I go back out, I'm back to what I'm, I'm a host. And one, another thing to show you is I mentioned, you know, we need to create a credential spec. So I can show you here what I have, credential spec. So this is the credential spec. Um, let's just quickly see what's there. So just give, I don't expect you would understand everything, I, but at least give you a visual sense. And we have a lot of all the demo, uh, examples on the blog and docs. So basically set, set up, you know, with the machine, this is the account name. Is the GMSN name on uh, this you know, uh, domain uh, where you set up, you know, the, the group, this is a group manager service, group ma GMSA, you know, what the name, what's the scope, is it local or it's your on the wire, right? So, okay, so that gives you a sense. This is container, actually, the web application I showed you earlier actually is going to the container. Now, how do I prove that's not the case? So I, I'll shut down this container. Then when next time I go to that website, it should fail, right? Because it's, Container is running, even though you, you go, you think you are going to the host, but it's actually going to the container on the host. So if I stop this container, it should fail, right? With me, okay. So I'm gonna stop. Um, I forgot the word, uh, the container image ID. Let me get it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop. To see, this is the ID here. It just takes a minute. Okay, now it should be stopping. Just double check. Yeah, this is stop. So now if I go back here, it was working. Now it should not be because I stopped the container. So it's no longer working. There you go. It's not a demo fail. It actually succeeded. I'm going to show you that the container is not working. Okay, um, so let me switch back to this. Um, Screen. So I'm going to show you. Uh, so I, this demo, I show you how, uh, what is importance, why uh, identity is important, and how to leverage GMSA to bring the, uh, be the bridge between old to the new. And I'll also show that you know all the documentation that uh, our team has done in the last um, few months. And I, I would recommend you give it a try, um, and give us feedback. Okay. So this is that on this hopefully. Uh, as you can see, the, the elephant is smaller. So over time, hopefully elephant keeps smaller and maybe become a kitty, like, uh, you know, something even cuter. Uh, okay, so I think my time is over here. I'm, I'm done with my demo. I'm gonna actually hand over to Craig to show us what's the new world. Craig. For switching between demo machine and uh, presentation. Okay, yeah, great. Thanks, so let's talk a little bit about doing it right with new apps. Uh, can we click the next slide, please? Oh, next slide, thank you. This one, oh, thank you, because I don't like it very much. Okay, so circling back on the Windows base images, I wanted to touch more on the, the third image over there called Windows. Now you'll notice underneath the key frameworks and use cases, you'll see the Win32 API set, and as well, you'll see DirectX. So today, what I want to tell you about is how we are enabling new applications to be lifted and shifted into Windows containers uh, that are DirectX based. And as well with that too, we um, you know, do envision the Windows image as enabling new experiences like print servers too. I'm not gonna show that today, but I do want to call that out that we've had customers asking about um, enabling the ability to do some print services. So the Windows image is the right way to go there. So GPU acceleration in Windows containers. Let's talk about that. So, um, DirectX acceleration. How many people are familiar with DirectX? Show of hands. Actually, wow, that is actually a surprising amount of users. That's awesome. So for the folks who don't know what DirectX is, much like in Windows, we have the, the Windows kernel that sits below all the applications and arbitrates between them and handles resources. Uh, from a graphics perspective, we have DirectX. It too is called the DXG kernel, DirectX kernel. And it sits there and it will arbitrate between 
different processes that are running on top and using the GPU. Uh, so if you have multiple applications that are drawing to the screen or you have a game running on the side, DirectX is gonna manage when those pixels are drawn and that sort of thing. So really, it's an API that powers a lot of rendering and compute and gaming workloads on Windows. And the cool thing about DirectX is you don't have to have a GPU for it to work. Uh, it actually runs across uh, the, whatever hardware you have intelligently. So if you just have a CPU, it'll use that. But if you do have a GPU, then DirectX will take advantage of that. And so the, the flow is, imagine that you have some sort of application. Let's say it's written in C++. That application is going to talk to DirectX which is then going to, on behalf of the application, interface with the hardware, make sure that those calls happen, they go to the hardware, the hardware does the operations, comes back to the app, and then the app you know, draws its pixels. What we're doing is we're taking the first two parts and we're gonna just containerize it, okay? So the app is still running, this time it's gonna be in a container, it's gonna be talking to DirectX, but then, and the DirectX is gonna be running inside the container, but then it's gonna be reaching out to the hardware to, to do its work. And so, you know, an example that I like to think about and some customers have actually told us about is, imagine that you have an application that's running, it's talking to DirectX, and it does some rendering operation. What it's gonna do is it's gonna do the rendering operation inside the container headlessly, because remember, containers are headless, but it's gonna take that data and it's gonna pipe it out to dummy, you know, thin clients, basically. So you have the rendering that's done inside the container, boom, shoots it out, and then from the phone and the desktop, you can see the, the outputted image. And so the way that we do this is we've actually integrated with the existing uh, language for how you, you run with the device in Docker. It's Docker run dash dash device. In Windows, it's this uh, interface class GUID. It's a bit ugly, but if you go to our Windows container docs online, uh, we have this documented. So you don't have to memorize this. You can just go to our container docs. But so what we're gonna do is we do Docker run dash dash device, give it this class GUID for a GPU, specify the Windows container image, specify the application that we want to run, and then it just works. So now, I'd like to demo this, and really quickly before you switch over, if you do want to understand more about what I'm demoing, there is a session later um, from the Windows AI platform uh, for, uh, kind of goes into a little bit more about what we're going to be showing, as well they have a, a, a booth, but okay. Sweet. Okay, so what we have here is we have a, a Windows VM up in Azure. It's running Windows Server 2019. And uh, we're just going to do this Docker run. We're gonna run it with process isolation, and we're gonna make sure that that container gets GPU acceleration. So now as I run it, it's gonna print out some output. What this thing is doing is it's taking a machine learning model called Tiny Yolov, and it's going to evaluate it on the CPU 100 times, and it's gonna do the same thing using the GPU. Now, if you're gonna bet that the CPU is faster, you'd be dead wrong, because the GPU is actually gonna do it in 15 milliseconds, whereas the CPU did it in 84, so that's four times faster. Uh, so, you know, what we're demonstrating here is this is an application that's running inside of a container uh, using, you can see it prints out, the NVIDIA Tesla M60 GPU. So you're using that M60 inside the container to accelerate your workload uh, to an impressive, you know, four and a half X faster performance uh, over the CPU counterpart. So this is just one example of using GPU acceleration in Windows containers. Uh, because what this is doing underneath is it's using a, the, it's called Windows ML. It's a framework that's built on top of DirectX. And that's why we can do this. Um, so just one example, but there are many more. And I'm curious to see and hear more about how you guys envision using this. So let's go ahead and cut, cut back over. Great. And so that's, that's GPU acceleration in Windows containers. Please come see me afterwards if you'd like to understand more about this. We can have a chat. Now I'd like to invite back up Taylor to close this out. So thank you to, to Wei Juan and Craig and Amber. I think um, hopefully that was useful. Some cool demos. I mean, I think this class of kind of bridging these two worlds together is a really valuable way for us to think about how we bring containers of Windows and Linux together, our old apps that power our businesses together with the new apps that we're building in a uniform, seamless way. Uh, and that's one of the things that I'm super excited about with AKS as well is that now we have this ability to have Windows node pools, Linux node pools side by side in the same uh, cluster. We can bring our apps together. We have one seamless way to manage them, think about them, update them, scale them out, scale them in. All of those things just become so much easier. Um, 
you know, we've got a lot of applications that are built on Windows Server. We're really proud of those applications. Um, Windows Server has been a platform that, that continues to have a lot of new innovation on, and we think containers and these bridges are gonna uh, make that easier uh, as you move forward. I do wanna really push on, make sure you're looking at the, the, the right base images, whether that's actually building on uh, Windows Server Core or Nano, or generally more uh, applicable to higher level ones, IIS or WCF. Those images are produced by our teams. We continue to put new optimizations in there. Uh, so we partner heavily with the IIS team, for example, who maintain that IIS image. As they find new uh, features and new experiences, better optimizations, they add those in. Uh, you can certainly look at the Docker file and subscribe to changes for the Docker file that's published alongside it, or just use that image directly. Uh, and then I'm really, really excited for people to take advantage of the Kubernetes service. Um, the preview sign up for it is aptly named aka.ms slash aks underscore win. Um, go, go ahead and get signed up there. Um, we're looking to bring in a lot more people into that private preview right now as we uh, validate and kind of really push the scale on it and get ready to go to a uh, public preview, as well as the SQL preview. So we've got a lot of people I know who've expressed interest about running SQL and containers in production for uh, the last couple of years. The SQL team is listening. They have a preview sign up now. Go ahead and go sign up there. Um, tell them what you're interested in, what kind of applications and how. We're excited to be able to, to get people going into that. Um, and then of course the, uh, the survey that Amber pointed out, this is our best way to understand and prioritize the work uh, that's gonna be the most useful to all of you. I've got a laundry list of things to do. Uh, I've got, unfortunately, fewer devs than I would like to have. I'd always like to have more devs. Um, and so helping prioritize that work is really a key part of our team's job. Uh, your feedback carries a ton of weight, an immense amount of weight in helping do that. Um, and then last but not least, we are also running a, uh, a customer survey and kind of feedback session. We've got a couple of these uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. So folks across the Azure Compute team, both uh, AKS, uh, parts of our team, um, the ACI team, are all gonna be listening to various customers kind of give feedback, what experiences work well, what experiences don't. We really would like to hear about the experiences that don't work well. Uh, that helps us figure out how to, to make those experiences ones that you love and, and enjoy. And you know, for, uh, for your effort, you get uh, some swag and a Starbucks gift card. So, pretty cool. So with that, thank you very, very much for your time today. Thanks for being here at Build. Um, really excited to continue to see such great, interesting containers. Give us feedback and enjoy the rest of the day. Go have a beer on us.